So look at the pe that picture. That is our first round of students. Thinking of yesterday, what do you notice? More than 50% girls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and let me tell you, you cannot run a company without women. It just doesn't work. Okay, so we change the world one group at a time. Our second group, what do you notice then? Again, 50% of women. All being trained by men. But anyway, that will change as well. We are busy working on Zoom <laughs> Right, I'm going to start my um, presentation just to give you some background on South Africa. We, you know, I, um, we are quite um, an advanced country, I think, but we still have some homeland areas or historically homeland areas. And the Limpopo province is one of those provinces. We have some others that have that as well. But um, in Limpopo province, which is there at the top, You'll see the um, near Zimbabwe and Botswana. Um, the median household income is about $160 per month. So poverty there is really true. Um, they have very low levels of formal employment. Um, about 71% of the people in Limpopo still live in homeland areas. Um, and I'm going to tell you now why I'm giving you this bit of background. They've got over 60% unemployment. And in 1996, um, only about 30 to 35% of all the households in that province had water, running water and electricity in their houses. So the students I'm going to be showing you were all born and continued to live for at least the first 10, 12 years of their lives in conditions like this. But this is not unknown for Africa. We All our countries are in that position. So the Limpopo Provincial Government Department drew up a green economy plan and it sort of aligned to all the sta uh, strategies that Lisa also spoke about. And they identified, like with every, all, in all countries, there's green skill shortage and um, that they needed to get youth participation because there's a lot of youth in um, a lot of young people in, in, in poorer regions there are a lot more children per, uh, children per um, household than in more educated um, regions um, they wanted their youth to be employable and they wanted to have job creation and enhance their career prospects now for, just so that you know, all our provinces, they release results for matriculants and Primpopo is always at the bottom two of the provinces where they don't, they hardly get 50% pass rates for matric. For the reason there are no classrooms, they, the kids don't have schools, they sometimes have six, seven grades in one room like this and the teacher has to teach this grade and that grade and that grade in one day. Um, I have one of our students, a top performing student, that only received his first uh, math lesson um, a year before he had to write his uh, matric exam. For two years he didn't have a maths, lesson, maths teacher. Um, then, the background, <coughs> the, this program we ran, uh, Limpopo came to us and said, we have money. Uh, that we secured and please can you help us get these students to a level where they can actually make a difference in our own province. So we said, uh, they said that students had to be from their province originally, um, be under 35, must have some basic type of schooling and then some technical background. Now some of them I'm sure were the first round they picked them up off the pavement. We really had a problem uh, getting them to a level to understand what was happening. Um, we asked that their stu studies must be completed, but most of them hadn't completed their studies. Then we put them through a program because for Limpopo, uh, all they wanted is they wanted to be better than any of the other provinces. Like Kenya wants to be better than Tanzania, Tanzania think they're better than Kenya, and 
that's the competition that goes on between the countries, same in the provinces. They wanted these students to not have a local qualification, they wanted an international qualification. Now, who here are all CEMs? Who's certified energy managers? Okay, you, so you know what that exam is about. Okay? So coming from the background, just think what we had to do to get them to pass this exam. Not very few pass, but we took them through various fundamentals, uh, fundamental training, um, in-class assignments, we kicked off in-class. Um, so we uh, used basic modules, uh, energy fundamentals, data analysis, um, and then we used our local qualification program um, towards the CEM and CEA um, training. Then a CEA certified energy manager, for those that don't know. Then we took them to buildings, and we England Papa and government buildings, and with mentors, and said, right, here's the equipment, let's go and install loggers, let's go and take the lux meters, let's go count lights. We gave them templates, and we physically did energy audits with them after we trained them. And that was done by CEM trainers, um, like Harness and Chris and those guys here. Um, so that they could get a, a, a feel for what the training was. And let me tell you, the technical side wasn't the problem. The people skills side to get into the building. And um, you know what it's like, an audit sounds like we're in, all in trouble and we're going to lose our jobs. And so there were some uh, real challenges with that. Um, so we teach them how to use the equipment. The benefit was this program was funded but the audit reports and the work that we could come out of it and the energy savings basically paid for that project. Then we had to find them workplaces. Now, the first round, the province found the workplaces. The second round, we said, hold on, we will do it ourselves. So, because we had some of the first round students with CEMs, Certified Energy Managers, and in their companies, and others were with whoever wanted them. And the ones that were with CEMs completely outperformed any of the others. So the Limpopo province thereafter said only CEMs must mentor our children. So we placed them with companies where there were CEMs that could mentor them. Um, then uh, they worked then after that for 10 to 12 months in the companies doing basic work. Um, the work had to relate to the syllabus we trained, which is your Certified Energy Manager syllabus. The typical work tasks we got them to do, because to do energy management, you need a lot of experience, but you need to start somewhere. So somewhere, and those that know me know, I get stuck like a record on ISO 50001. I'm a very big believer in that. So we... Um, taught them and they had to actually implement systems like that or at least get the paperwork going that they could get to learn the company. They did basic energy audits like the same you need to for an energy performance certificate. Um, we taught them how to run energy efficiency initiatives and training and advocating within those companies. Um, we taught them how to identify low hanging fruit projects and this was sort of the brief given to the CEMs to get them started. Bill verification, tariff modeling, data collection. That's all stuff that it's really nice to start on. And it teaches them a lot about the background on, on energy efficiency. And then every year I had to go and visit, check that they were actually doing their work and what was happening. Um, see if the mentors understood what was happening. Um, we had a roaming uh, mentor um, that goes around with equipment. If the students thought, oh, I think I've picked up something that could really save my, this company money, but they didn't have the confidence, um, uh, we sent our trainer there to help them uh, quantify the findings so that they could put it forward to their company for implementation. All right, so the outcomes that were aligned to the Green Economy Plan. So the, there's certain categories in that plan that we had to meet. And we achieved, they wanted job creation. So 30% of those 
uh, students are now permanently employed. However, not in their province. Um, capacity building and skills transfer was achieved. Awareness around energy efficiency, they can do that in their own province easily now. Uh, energy retrofits can be implemented, but still under supervision. Um, greening public buildings, in, you know, in relation to the uh, Department of Public Buildings Green Office and Green Offices Unit they, that Lisa spoke about, they can actually contribute to that. Um, and then that we taught them how to build and install solar PV panels as well. Um, however, the key is at this stage, still most of it under supervision. What we did not achieve is there are still no provincial jobs. Uh, and the reason is there are no companies in that province. All those companies come from Gauteng and all the richer provinces and that's not the aim of the program. However, after three years as a young student and the background, if there are any students, you can't run a company yet that does this type of project. You need experience. So, so um, yeah, the, the, the next step is the youth have to become entrepreneurs, more entrepreneurial, and they are, but they don't have support. Um, the government uh, departments, they work in silos. So, for instance, the Department of Energy would have a project or like the Limpopo Economic Development Department who paid for the students, don't talk to the Department of Public Works. The Department of Public Works would rather pay 100,000 rand for an audit instead of 5,000 rand to a student to do the same thing um, under mentorship. So there's no communication between our various government departments. So implementing projects in that province is a challenge. The work is there. It's just to get the finance to get the work done. And then the, obviously the exam pass rate. They're teenagers. They think it's school. If you sat for CM exam, it's not school. Um, and then when the program ends and they don't have jobs, then what? There's no answer for that. Now there are many... Um, many programs similar to this in the country. Uh, for instance, these programs where they teach the kids to build houses, so you get reclaying and after here you can actually build a wall. So you can go and build a wall and create a job, create jobs and companies. However, in, a, in the energy industry, it's not just that simple. Um, you guys are all experienced, it's still hard to penetrate markets because you have other disciplines in companies who don't understand energy. Um, I heard one gentleman yesterday say, you have to focus on the non-energy related business or benefits. I'm so sick of hearing that, you know. Why can people not respect that energy actually is a commodity that does contribute to your bottom line if you use it efficiently? So what we, ex uh, what we achieved over and above what was expected, we have six that passed their CM exam out of 52. Um, three are now CMs because they have been employed. Three are Emmets um, and they will, and, and most of them are employed. Um, there's about another six that definitely will pass. They were very, very close, like one or two percent out. What also happened is there was really extraordinary skills development. If you take it, if you take a, a BSc engineering student from a fancy university and they've got their four-year degree and they're now an engineer, mechanical or electrical, they go for a program like this and they work, they're electrical engineer, they go into, for their internship and they do electrical engineering work. And they, they enter at this level and they exit at that level. These students enter at this level. However, because of the nature of CM, they might have one or two years of electrical theory background. But once we finish with them, we've taught them about mechanical, industrial processes. They have to understand the whole holistic thing because of the requirements of CM. So they enter here and they sometimes enter at the same exit, skills-wise, at the same level as proper in, you know, the engineers they actually wanted to be, but they couldn't get in to those universities because they didn't have the educational 
qualifications and metric to make it. And it becomes an issue um, like if you uh, imagine in an office and you have somebody who's got 10 degrees and somebody else who has no degrees and they have to work really hard to make sure they are seen and they start outperforming, that's what happened. So quite a lot of politics happening because here comes this little guy from the Mpipa who is just eager to learn because he has not had the opportunities of others and he's kicking their butts. And because suddenly now the electri he's, he's electrical, but he can talk with the mechanicals, he can talk with the chemical guys. Um, so that's the, the um, an additional benefit that came out of this project. Also, two successful ISO 5001 implementations passed audits by TUV and the SABS done by these students okay, in a manufacturing industry, motor vehicle manufacturing industries. And not small companies in the Meteor groups, um, Unitrades, um, you know, quite big companies, they're big factories, three, four plants, successful ISO by these students. Thinking of where they're coming from, please remember, they're not engineers yet, not close to it. Um, identified a billion US dollars implemented energy savings at customers, the APSA Bank, NetBank, um, uh, at Vodacom. So it's actual work they did. Bill verification, tariff modeling, energy audits, identified opportunities which those companies implemented and they're busy implementing it. There's no other internship or learnership or capacity building program that has this type of result. And that's only in the first six months. I'm busy collecting the data for the second six months. We only finished last month. And then that cross-engineering fields, um, skills that I already spoke about. So what I've done now is we've now got all these kids that have all these skills, but they can't really find work in their own province. So the next round, um, I've, I've drawn up an organogram of your typical business. You need somebody who's good at marketing. You need somebody who's good at finance. You need various skills. So, and out of this group, we found some natural talents and I've allocated them in an organogram. And the next round, we will be selecting students to fill the gaps and to train them through that program. And after 18 months, I think we might be ready to start helping them set up companies in their own province. Um, it would be so great, um, you know, it will be the first program in South Africa that achieves something like that. So that is the, the um, path we are on, and we hope, I think it will be successful. Then, why AE certification? As I said, they wanted it to be better than the other provinces. Also, there's nothing like CEM. Any, you know, that type of training, you just don't get it anywhere in the world. Um, it's been going for over 40 years. If anybody else has it, they've copied it. Then, uh, there's a strong focus for CEM and AE in Africa. Um, there's a big drive, even by the European uh, companies, to have that. And the competitors, oh, you don't even have to mention them. Um, from Energy Training Foundation side, we've that's where we have a presence. Oh, heck, sorry. Um, that's where we have a presence at the moment, and it's growing quite rapidly. Some of these countries, like Nigeria, is already up there again. Um, Tanzania is going to be up there. Ethiopia. So there's quite a lot of activities happening in Africa. And these countries, when I go to them, they all go, these bloody Kenyans come in and because they have all these CMs, they get our work. That's what's happening. You guys are getting them to do AE. Um, then, to stay up to date, we have your chapter, South African chapter, quite a lot of things, and we actually encourage the students to attend here. We sponsor them to go to these places because they network and they meet um, people, and that's where they've been getting the jobs. So, we We've basically, I've been taking them to conferences. I've put them onto speaker platforms. Kids that tell me, I will do my presentation by WhatsApp. Um, you know, it's a generation of 
that I want to stand up and speak. I, made, I forced them to get up and tell me what they've done and tell the others what they've done. I have one guy who's super, super, super clever, uh, gets 100% for maths in everything, just has a brain like that. But he refused to get up. He's now doing training, energy awareness training, every week in his company. <coughs> so there's where they did the practical installation, some of the students. Then, don't underestimate if you tackle a program like this. There's a huge admin burden. Um, learners need to be screened. Workplaces need to be screened. There's a lot of logistical arrangements. Uh, learners have to be registered. Human resources, ethics, uh, fine, uh, reports and reports and reports. We always get audited all the time. It does not happen without challenges as well. Learners don't comply, they're teenagers, you know. They don't pitch for class, they sign a contract for employment, and then for three weeks they don't pitch, and then you, when you phone them they say, I didn't know I had to be there every day. Um, so lots of disciplinary issues, um, you know, if they need to. So our new program, we've got more workplace readiness, how to write an email. Don't just write, yes. No. <laughs> Thank you for your email. You know, simple things like that, but it goes a long way. Um, a lot of them have really a lot of personal challenges, parents that are ill. Um, some of these boys, 19 years old, have three kids, um, four kids that do, you know, it's lots of challenges. But they call me Mama Africa because I'm always there for them. Um, then, uh, to protect the program, there's a lot of paperwork we do. We do get all the personnel information, we do disciplinary codes, we make them sign everything. We sit one on one with them um, like that. <laughs> it takes two days to sign up the students. We make sure they sign next to every line. I will be in class, I will bring my calculator, I will look at the deadlines, I will. We make them and we give them with every line an opportunity to answer. It's the only way you can um, do this properly. They, they have to declare authenticity. So we have three subtegies and they all submit the same thing because they're all cousins. They all submit the same assignment, forget to change the first names. All the same work it happens, but yeah, we get all the employment <coughs> confirmations. So. The benefits of good control and documentation, and I'll give you the presentation if you want to, to it, is that there's security for the learner. There, there are responsible learners. There's always a bad value in every, in, in every batch, but for the responsible learner, they want to know they have security. The next time we met, I'm going to get this money on that day, so that means I can go home or whatever. So they have that for the workplace host sites, they don't have to do any HR. We manage it all. Um, and that makes them also more, um, you know, they invite the students then onto the program. It's very hard to get workplaces um, for, because people are busy and they don't want to share, you know, they don't have time to do that. And then for the debt, um, it's a well managed program. They get the recognition all over South Africa because of it, because everybody thinks they're great. But all they do is they just pay me and then I do it. <laughs> and we give them all the reports. But if you make it easy for them, it's also government organizations have a lot of other challenges. So when we, as you know, we have a lot more maneuverability with, um, uh, you know, paying bills or somebody needs safety shoes, then I, you know, they don't have money, I can organize money that they can get safety shoes, so various things like that. And then an investment into the program, um, it makes that we can get money for the next round and the next round and continue and develop it. And then for us, it, we, you know, we protect ourselves that if something goes wrong, all the paperwork is in place. The paperwork is a very critical issue. And then growth is guaranteed because of where they come from. You can only grow on a program like this no matter where you come from, but the growth on this program is really, really um, great. So there's Lisa with our first student that passed. Sorry. There you go, Lisa. 
and this is some awesome, there are such awesome um, kids on this program. I really, really love doing this work.